we're kind of gathering by now that if you want to mix, a room is a problem. You can say I have a great room, but it's still a room. It's only so great. Um, an ideal in an ideal world, you know, we would just take our speakers and put them outside and mix out there. When speakers are designed, they're they're tested in uh, anechoic chambers, which kind of emulates a, a a space where there's no boundaries, a little bit like a field. Or if you were elevated in the air by you know a hundred feet and there was nothing around you, that's how you're going to get a true response of a speaker. And so they spend hours and weeks and months trying to develop these speakers that have a really flat response. And then we go and buy them, we put them in a room, and it sounds completely different. In an ideal world, a control room or a mix room wouldn't have a tone. There wouldn't be a tone. It would, it would be a neutral space. The only problem with that is, um, and we get this a lot, people get scared that if they're going to put a lot of panels everywhere, they're going to end up with saying this to us. I don't want the room to be too dead. What can we do about that? Well, really, a, a, a dead room is a, is a strange term because it only really happens if you haven't taken care of the base, which Mike kind of hit on. I think we're all kind of telling you you need to control the base. That's the most important thing. If you have a room and you just put up a load of one inch uh, pyramid foam and you just cover all of the surfaces, all the first reflections, they're, they're you know, in the, in the high and mids, maybe the higher side of the mids are going to be dealt with pretty, pretty efficiently. But the only problem with that, it's kind of like turning the bass control up on your hi-fi. Now you have an overemphasized bass and you have even more of a muddy, boxy room than you did to begin with. Um, and if, it's, if you're using foam, then it, it might catch on fire as well. What you need to do, we, we know that we need thick panels that are absorbent from the highs all the way down to the lows. And we, we need a lot of coverage because the wavelengths are so massive that you need a lot of panels. You know, there's no point just having like the bass trap in the corner and expecting that to absorb all of the bass. The only problem is, you know, you have all these thick, thick panels everywhere, you've killed the room, but it doesn't sound dead. It sounds even, it sounds balanced apart from that's only as far as the sound from the speakers is concerned so the speaker to listener response sounds great when you're when you're when you're listening in that room and you basically have no more boundaries and you've taken care of the low end what you're hearing is now much more like the anechoic chamber that the speakers were designed in um, and that's really the only way you're going to get very a very accurate representation of what you're mixing we want to basically make the room disappear acoustically speaking which we've done with all of these very thick panels and the speaker response sounds more like how it was designed in the first place but we're human we tend not to really like spending time in rooms where our brains can't really locate where the boundaries are it it it, it kind of makes us feel a little bit uneasy. It, it kind of makes us feel like we're in a padded cell or something like that. You know, it, maybe it's going to drive us insane. And other people have, depending on uh, your tolerance to this, some people can can stay in a room like that for hours and hours and think that that is, that is fine and, and they can work there. And, and I'm, I'm kind of more like one of those people. I don't really mind so much if the room is is very well controlled um, with, with, with zero reflections. Other people, they, they can't. They can't really spend long hours of time uh, working in these rooms uh, without any kind of reflective elements in the room. So what we need to do is we need to start introducing some reflective elements that scatter the sound and also provide some localization cues. This is where it gets into psychoacoustics. So you're, you're in the room and now all of a sudden you're looking at a wall and uh, the wall in front of you, but you're also hearing some kind of feedback from your movements, from your voice when you're, when you're speaking to clients. Maybe you want to pick up a, an acoustic guitar and start writing something in the mix room and then overdub something. 
it's a much more comfortable environment to be in. But we don't want to undo all of the hard work that we've done already by by putting all these absorbent pa absorbent panels everywhere. If we if we do too much, we're just going to end up back right where we were, and we're just going to have reflections everywhere again. So how do we do it? Well, location is is something that we can do. So you'll see some examples here of uh, in the front we have pure absorbers. The, the, the front of the room has just pure absorbers on the side walls, on the ceiling. And then towards the back, we have these kind of cool looking, cool looking panels. So these are the GIK, well, modeled by John, uh, the GIK Alpha panel, Alpha Pro Series panel, and the uh, Impression Pro Series panel. Now they have these reflective scatter plates on the front. You'll see these kind of uh, notches and, and dots and things that are cut into them. So what that does is it, it they're, they're still primarily absorbers actually, even though they still they have these reflective surfaces on the front of them, but they're, they're cut in a way that majority of the, m the mid and low frequencies is just going to go straight through into the absorbent material behind, but the uh, the scatter plates on the front is just enough to provide some ref high frequency reflection, which is where the clarity is, so that the room starts to sound a little bit a little bit more natural again. You know, the best the best places for these types of panels, in my opinion, I mean, there's 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 many many ways to do this, but in particularly in small rooms, uh, you want to just mainly have those towards the back of the room so that you still have your reflection-free zone around the mixing area. So the side walls, the sound hitting the side walls forwards of your ears is still absorbed, but then you, if you turn around and you start speaking, you're, you're now interacting more with these kinds of panels to put, that's going to reflect back some of your movements and your, and your, um, your voice when you're, when you're speaking. There are other ways to do it as well, uh, if you have a larger room, maybe you might want to start looking into some diffusers, such as the, the GIK Gotham, or the Grid Fuser, or the Q7D. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, there's a picture there. There's also these curved devices here, which are the polyfusers. They work slightly differently from these panels. S some of them still do absorb, but less so. Uh, they're more ref uh, diffusers in the traditional sense that the sound is going to be reflected, but not in a specular manner. It's going to scramble the reflections in a way that the energy is kept in the room. But it's just, it's, it's, you're not going to be able to, it's not like a very strong reflection coming back that's going to, that's going to be distracting. So uh, it's all about just balancing the, the frequency response in the room and uh, getting the, the, the decays under control. Uh, but also, because we're human, we want to feel comfortable when we're working in these rooms for long periods of time. In a live room, it's less critical because you can move a microphone around, you can move an instrument, you can, uh, you, you can move it closer to a, a reflective surface or closer to a, an, absor an absorber. In a control room or, or, or mixing room, you have one spot and the speakers don't move. It has to sound right in that location. That's why um, putting panel, different types of panels in the room in certain locations is so critical because you don't, you don't want really to have any influence from the room while you're mixing. The, the room isn't doing us any favors.